Happy Wednesday. God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. It is Ash Wednesday. Come on in. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Sister D. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Red. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Patty Joyce McKee Wiley. God bless you. So good to be on this morning. Y'all come on in. We're not going to be long this morning, but I am so excited to share with you this morning. Come on, go ahead, tag somebody, invite somebody, share this word this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Sister T, God bless you. So good to see you all with us this morning. Good morning, Sister Valerie Warren. So good to see you all with us this morning for this time of devotion. Amen. God bless you. So good to see each and every one of you on this morning. Listen, I want to dive right in and say welcome to Renew 2021. Welcome to Renew 2021. My brothers and sisters, I am praying that over the course of the next 40 days that you would be renewed, uh, that we would be revived, that we would be restored in the midst of our walk with God. Amen. This Lenten season, I pray that we are able to grow that we are able to be stretched and that we will be blessed by our time sharing each day. I want to encourage you to invite somebody to come along on this journey with us as we grow deeper in God's word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this time in the word. We ask now that you will open our hearts, that you would open our minds, that you would help us to be receptive to your word. God, help us to be blessed on today by what you have to say what you have to share with us. We bless you. We uh, repent of our sins now, God. We ask that you would wash us, that you would help us to be made new in your son's matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name, we pray. Amen and thank God. My brothers and sisters, I want to begin this morning uh, by trying to describe, first of all, what Ash Wednesday is all about. I want to begin by trying to give us some parameters, some guidelines as to what this really is all about. Historically speaking, Ash Wednesday begins the season of Lent, a period of 40 days before Easter, not including Sundays when Christians practice self-denial and self-examination. The date changes every year determined by a lunar calendar that allows Passover and Easter to be observed as closely together as possible in keeping with the biblical story surrounding the passion of Jesus Christ. Ash Wednesday recalls, Sister D, Jesus conquering of temptation in the wilderness. On this day, some Christian denominations, and not us, but some Christian denominations, place ashes in the shape of a cross on the forehead of believers. Some of us may have seen this a few times throughout the years. As a sign that they are about to enter a period when they too will seek to overcome temptation in their lives. Watch this, Sister T. Aristotle once observed, that the unexamined life is not worth living. Ash Wednesday begins a time of self-examination by all believers. It begins a time for purging from our lives any practices, 
beliefs, attitudes, or habits that are inconsistent with godly living. Beginning on Ash Wednesday, Sister Val, Christians should focus on discovering the self-indulgent practices in their lives that prevent them from living the life taught and exemplified by Jesus Christ. We live at a time when being searched and examined internally and externally has become a standard part of our life. In airport security, our, our, we're checked and our carry-on bags are searched along with the contents of our pockets. Modern medical care includes such things as mammograms, blood tests, x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, EKGs, EEGs, biopsies, and colonoscopies. Sadly, the recurring problem of drunk drivers has made us familiar with the breathalyzer, which measures the amount of alcohol in the blood. Now watch this. All of these are methods by which our bodies are searched for anything not readily apparent to the eye that may prove to be hazardous to our health. Ash Wednesday, my brothers and sisters, allows us to be examined at the level of our souls. It invites us to slow down and examine the values, examine the vocabulary, examine the vision of the future and the vices that define our lives. As winched is, is our response to Aristotle's reminder that the unexamined life is not worth living. Psalm 51 is David's plea for mercy following his adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. And David attempted to cover up that resulted in the death of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite. My brothers and sisters, David did not arrive at this moment of repentance by his own will of volition. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, the prophet Nathan confronted David about his sins. Psalm 51 is David's acknowledgement of his sins, and more importantly, it is his request that God create within him a clean heart and a new and a right spirit. Psalm 51 and 4 reminds us that sin is not simply against the person we have hurt or wronged, Bathsheba and Uriah. Sin is always against God since it is God who has established the laws and standards that we have violated. David said, against you and you alone have I sinned. Verse 5 points to David's belief in the doctrine of original sin as he declares, indeed, listen, I was born guilty. I was born a sinner when my mother conceived me. Verses 16 and 17 echo many of the biblical prophets who said that God is not pleased with animal sacrifices. Watch this. God is not pleased with other religious rituals. What God really desires is our heart. Verse 1 reminds us of Zedekiah or God's steadfast love. It is steadfast love that allows God to look beyond our faults <laughs> and see our needs. Uh, nowhere is the this attribute of God's character more poignantly or beautiful expressed than in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. And it says this, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail, but they are new every morning. Oh my God, great is your faithfulness, God. I got to read that again. It's getting good to my spirit, y'all. The text says in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, that says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. We've fallen down. We've messed up, but his compassions, oh my God, never fail. But they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
my brothers and sisters, my friend and kin, David desires that steadfast love of God so that his sins can be forgiven and his life can be spared from a harsh sentence that David knows God could impose. David knows that he's done wrong. David knows that he deserves to be punished, but David is looking to God for his steadfast love. He is looking for God to accept him. He is looking to God to restore him. Watch this. Structurally, the way this is put together, it must be observed that David could not seek God's forgiveness until he first acknowledged and repented of his sin. David couldn't ask God to forgive him, Sister Carolyn, without first of all repenting of his sins. There can be no forgiveness without repentance. Psalm 51 employs a series of increasingly aggressive measures meant to remove sin from our lives. Look at what it says. It begins by talking about blotting, a light dabbing on the outside in verse 1, then washing. This still addresses the outside in verse 2, followed finally by purging with hyssop. This has to do with a, a cleansing measure that impacts the inside in verse 7. See, purging with hyssop suggests that David needed to, to clean out his body from the inside. He needed to clean out his body of whatever sin was dwelling within him that was displeasing to God. The outcome of these various levels of cleansing is that David's life will be transformed. And instead of breaking God's law, verse 13 says that David will now teach transgressions the ways of of the Lord, my brothers and sisters. It is useful to link the study of Psalm 51 with the study of Romans 7, verses 14 through 25. Since both passages deal with the issue of human sinfulness and the need for divine intervention to allow us to break the cycle of sin that seems to be our nature. In other words, we need the help of God to overcome our sin problem, but it begins by us confessing our sins. Paul gives a personal admission of being a sinner and acknowledges in verse 18 that I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. In this aspect of life, Paul, David, and each of us stand together. We know what is good, but we keep doing what is wrong. There is an internal struggle within everyone who wants to serve God. The upward pull of the teachings of scripture to be better, but the downward pull of our human flesh and nature that seeks to satisfy our most sinful impulses and desire. What are you saying, Pastor? There's a war going on among us. There's a war going on in the inside of us that that which we do would do that we know is right often we don't do because we are pulled by our flesh. And so in this season of Lent, we are encouraged to repent of our sins. We are encouraged to focus our minds and our attention on what God wants to do in our lives and allow his word to clean us up from the inside out. If the truth be told, most of the behaviors that we detest in ourselves and in others can be traced to this spiritual warfare that Paul saw raging within his own life, that we feel raging within our own lives. Greed, jealousy, racism, sexism, violence, sexual exploitation, and warmongering. We can, we can will what is right, but we cannot do it. Watch this. Peter Gomes updates this language used to describe this struggle when he speaks of human beings for whom the easy wrong is preferable to the difficult right. <laughs> Pastor Gomes said, human beings, we would rather do the easy wrong than the difficult right. But Romans 7 and 24 raises a critical question for Christians. Who will rescue me from this body of sin? The answer is nobody. But Jesus can save us from the problems and the perils of sin. This confirms the insights of James A. Sanders, and I'm about to close 
But James A. Sanders says concerning biblical characters that serving as mirrors, but not as models of human behavior. What are you saying, Pastor? Biblical characters like David and Paul, no matter how they appear on their best days, will have a day when their behavior takes a sudden turn away from godliness because they are just people. And we only need consider, I mean, David and Bathsheba or David and Uriah or Saul and his persecution of, of the early Christian church and his standing idly by as a Christian was murdered when Stephen was stoned. If we sought to model our behavior after these biblical characters or earthly figures, they would eventually lead us astray. Listen, this, rather than being models of how we should live, biblical, biblical characters are actually mirrors of how we do our lives. In other words, they're not trying to model how we should live, but biblical characters are just real people that really live out their lives and they make real mistakes because they're really jacked up just like we are and they need a real God to help them out. Oh my God, today. <laughs> but my brothers and sisters, we are like them and they are like us. The only person mentioned in scripture deserving of being the model for human conduct is Christ. I'm closing. Only Christ sets a constantly perfect example. Only Christ is the way, the truth, and the life in John 14 and 6. Only Christ can save us from ourselves. So on this Ash Wednesday, and the season of Lent challenges us to acknowledge the way that we have contributed to our present predicament. This season of Lent calls us to take responsibility for the decisions that we have made that have jacked up our lives, that have messed up our prayer life, that have caused us to be distant from God. This season of Lent calls us to look inward and say, it is me, it is me, it is me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It is me, God, that needs a heart procedure. It is me, God, that needs your Holy Spirit to work on me because all of us, <laughs> all of us have a sin problem on some level and we have contributed to our present circumstance by our decisions, by our habits, by our mindsets. Are y'all praying with me and not seek always? We got to stop seeking to blame others when trying to account for what is going wrong in our lives and in our communities. We cannot be like Adam. Oh God, it was that woman you gave me. That's why I messed up. And then the woman, oh, it was that snake, God. Nobody wanted to take accountability in the fall. But this season, my brothers and sisters, is about us taking accountability for our own choices, for our own decisions that have caused problems within our homes, within our families, within our communities. When Paul says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, in Romans 3 and 23, he meant us as well. We will never overcome the challenges that can cripple us and kill us unless we are willing to examine ourselves. I close today by reminding us that the unexamined life is not worth living. Let us pray today. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. Master, we thank you for this time of renewal. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you that your word is powerful. Master, we come today confessing our sins. We come today confessing our shortcomings. We come today, God, declaring that we need you we need you to blot out our sins. We need you to wash our sins. And God, we need you to wash us on the inside with the hyssop of your word. God, we don't want to just be clean on the outside, but clean our hearts today. Clean our minds today. Clean our spirit in this season. As we prepare our hearts, as we focus our minds on the greatest gift how Jesus hung, bled, and died on Calvary for us. Prepare us, O oh God. Prepare us to live that resurrected life. Prepare us, God, 
by washing us with your word. And we thank you now in the precious saving name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We give you glory and we bless your holy name. Now, God, as we prepare to dismiss, I pray that you would keep everyone safe today. Father, as we travel to and fro, those that have to get out, keep them safe. Cover them, God, with your traveling mercies and with your angels. Bless all of these essential workers. Bless heads of state everywhere. God, keep your people safe like only you can. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name we pray. Amen and God bless. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. I pray that this word has blessed you on today. I look forward to seeing you all again over the course of the next 40 days as God will renew us through the power of his word. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Y'all be safe out there. God bless you, Deacon AT, man. So good to see you all this morning. Uh, Sister T, all of you all, be safe. Remember, I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Sister Valerie Warren Bird, Sister Carolyn Williams, God bless all of y'all. Be safe today. Peace.